I'm actually now uh, uh, close to uh, southwest of France in an area called Gaillard. It's near Anmas. It's very close oh. to Geneva. Like it's five minutes from Geneva, but it's inside the French territories now, okay. right now. Yeah, that's remind me with the film Fix Me when I'm moving with my car in Palestine during the siege with my yeah. cigarette, actually. So uh, yeah. it's, too, it's too similar in a way. Uh, uh, I find it, uh, I find it in a way, actually this period of time in a way, it's feed me with uh, nostalgia of the siege time in Palestine, but at the same time, it's feed me with energy. It's uh, actually, to be honest with you, I might have the virus. Uh, yeah. I have some symptoms, but it's not serious. Like I have symptoms more in the stomach, a little, uh, a little infection here, some headache, but, uh, and I know, I know how I got it. So if I get it, but it's not serious, but anyhow, uh, the period is feed me with energy. It's feed me with the energy that I used to practice 20 years ago in Palestine or 10, 15 years ago in Palestine. It's, uh, uh, I am not panic. I'm not afraid. Uh, I am in peace with any possibility. Uh, at a sudden, there is, uh, at a sudden, I can say that my uh, original uh, system of being a survivor is function again. Uh, I'm here around some European people, the French people, and I see that uh, uh, how it's for them something weird, something that they never experienced. They have expectation, they can't adapt to it. But I find myself very fast adapting to it, uh, in a way blocking the emotional part, which can create fear. And uh, out of it, I am processing the practical part. What can we do? Let's uh, find a solution. And I know that's from where coming. That's coming from living uh, military invasions in Palestine and living sieges and curfew, etc. So uh, I was talking with a friend right now, like before you call, and and he's also Palestinian, living in a process, Brussels, and he told me like. And I see all the Palestinians here, they have all this nostalgia for uh, the curfew time in Palestine and the uh, invasion, the military invasion, etc. And all of them, they feel that uh, they, they, have, they are energetic, you know. It's, I can't describe it actually, how it's function, but uh, I think... Uh, I think we are the Palestinian, we have advantage in this because we already experienced the siege and the curfew and we know how to deal with it. So feel free to, your, to use our experience. You can ask me whatever you want. I will uh, I'll be pleasure to deliver, man. In a way, we, I grow in a community which is more based on collective identity. And that's, if you see my, the first, the film Fix Me, it's more dealing with this to searching for individuality among the collective identity. In this period of time, you understand the power of collective identity. And I'm watching what's happening in Palestine, how they deal with it. Actually, they deal with this corona issue in an amazing way. They manage to control it. There is a big solidarity. People, people create groups. They are supporting each other. They, and I know, I know for that's coming. So even if I go back to remember the the military invasion, the curfew time that I lived in Palestine, it's full with, with joyful moment as well. Joyful moment mm -hmm. of solidarity, joyful moment of being together, joyful moment of uh, a, a kind of a human moment, human moments that in a way, sorry to say that, you miss when you are living in the West, which is a, in a society based in the individual and consuming. There is a different culture there in a way. And this is the time for that culture. That's why I told you I feel in a way, I feel good, I feel powerful, I feel uh, full with energy. I'm writing actually, even I might be affected by the virus, but I'm writing very well concentrated. I don't know how it's function. Anyhow, I think this is a period of time. I think this is a period of time for meditation. This is a period of time for rethinking. 
this is a period of time to to ask again the basic question about our existence as a human being. What's the meaning behind that existence? Because I think for tens of years in Europe, people just living what's available. You work, you buy, you consume. Your uh, the, even the value of happiness is connected to consuming. It's uh, so. I think it's time now for rethinking, because you know even. Even you think, what's the meaning of power? You know, there is some nation who builds uh, huge military forces, airplanes, muscle, etc. Then you find that, then you find that this stupid little virus is beating us all. So I think many questions can come. It's need to be generated. It's need to be uh, all these questions. I think need to. Uh, to take its place, it need time, and it need to be generated. And I, I hope that a better human being will go out out of this experience when it's finished. I'm sure it will finish in the end. It's a matter of months, maybe a year. I don't know, whatever it is. But uh, I hope something positive will come out of it. I'm optimistic, man. Even mm. when I'm. And uh, yeah. honestly, I'm following a lot what's happening in Palestine, and I enjoy it. They make a yeah. lot about it, man. Like it's it's really funny. I just following the social media what's happening in Bethlehem, because in Palestine actually it's all started in Bethlehem from where I came. And they make a lot of jokes and uh, funny atmosphere about it. And uh, so uh, I miss I miss this moment. I am I wish I'm sick there. It will it will be fun. In Palestine, it's all started with an, uh, a Greek group of tourists who came to Bethlehem. They stay in a hotel, and also they went to Israel, to many hotels there. And when they go back, they uh, they send a note to this hotel that the group, part of the group was affected with corona. So they immediately started to do tests, and they find that there is around 16, 17 cases of corona inside that hotel. And it's in Bethlehem area. So... Immediately, the uh, the Minister of uh, Health and the authority they immediately they go to the extreme uh, uh, steps. Like immediately, they close the area of Bethlehem. They close around the hospital. They start and immediately they go go immediately a kind of closure. They didn't wait. Like they start the closure in Bethlehem two weeks before France, for example, okay. and they manage to totally control it. Until a few days, they have only around 100 cases, and they know every case from where it's coming. It's not like you have just a case yeah. here. <clears throat> now the problem starts to be that we have around 50,000 Palestinian workers working in Israel, and Israel start to send them back. And <clears throat> today they find around, around 21 of them is affected by the corona. So now again we have the problems coming back from the Isra from the workers who coming from Israel, the Palestinian workers who are coming back from Israel. And we have 50,000. It's a big number. It's not easy to control, but uh, that's now like they are, um, the Palestinian government is digging the, those, uh, those workers to isolate themselves and uh, not to be socialized with anyone, not even with their families. And so this week is very critical in Palestine. It could be like totally controlled after they managed to control it, but this week is totally, totally critical. Also, like two days ago, the Israeli they release a prisoner, and you know, when a prisoner came to a village, everyone is celebrating him, and they found that this prisoner has a corona. So Israel, before releasing him, they don't even test him, and now this prisoner, like they are, they are trying to see who's affected by him. Until now, it's under control and people people showing solidarity and understanding, and etc. But uh, but we don't know yet. We don't know yet because in Israel we have um, maybe around four or five thousand cases now. In mm. Palestine we have around one hundred. That's all. Uh, also, that like uh, one of the videos that really make me feel sick and make me feel that what a shit a human beings. Like last week, uh, Israel found an, uh, an, a Palestinian worker who worked legally in Israel with a fever. 
So they thought that this guy might have a Korema. They put him in ambulance and they throw him in the street, in the first street in the West Bank and left him and go. So, you know, this arrogant way of, this arrogant mentality, even with the, in the Corona time, it didn't end. They still see the Palestinian as an animal, it's not as a human being. Okay, if you are sick, we don't need you anymore as a worker. They put him in a, in a car and they send him to the West Bank and left him on the street and go back. They, they don't even check him or send him to hospital or something like that. So, so until now, you can see, you can see the nature of the human being, how they act with that. Uh, I don't know. I have many things to talk about, many ideas this period of time. Of course, the right wing uh, political parties now, they will try to use this fear that people uh, passing through to, to gain politically. But I think at the same time, it's a period for a human being to rethink about his nature as a human being. Stop thinking as egoists. Stop thinking as the, that we are the most powerful creator in this uh, universe. And uh, hopefully, I don't know, but I believe that after this will pass, they will be, it will generate new ideas and it will generate a new... Uh, thoughts, maybe it will generate a better human being. I don't know. If I will think about Fix Me and Ghost Hunting, the last two films. Fix Me is a film that dealing with... Uh, in Fix Me, actually, I went to a psychoanalysis in Ramallah and I asked him to do psychoanalysis session for me and I filmed my life in Bethlehem and Ramallah among family and friends and and uh, the memories of jail, and I feel my life. It's in a kind of documentary based on my psychoanalysis session that I'm doing with the doctor. And it's deal mainly with the individual identity as an artist, as in a filmmaker within, when you are living in a place which is totally based in a collective identity because there is a struggle. So, and this period of time is too, is a lot related to that film in a way. Too much related to a film because now uh, I look, I'm totally individual as an artist, but I'm coming from a society. I grew up in a society which is too much based on collective uh, values because of because of survival. To be to be to live under occupation, you can't be individual, you will never survive. You have to be protected by a society, by a family, by organizations, by whatever. You have to find in a group to survive with. And as an artist, I'm totally individual when I'm working with my with, with my art. So I think I have the privilege of being have a unique voice as an individual, but at the same time I still have an, a collective identity. And this is what I find it useful now. And that's remind me a lot of uh, Fix Me. In Ghost Hunting, it's very clear the relation. Ghost Hunting is a film about the jail, a period of jail that when I spent one year in jail and it's about inter interrogation and investigation center where I work with a group of ex-prisoners to rebuild the jail that we have been in and bringing back all these memories through reenactment and and <clears throat> And honestly, um, now the entire world is living a kind of jailing period of time. So uh, maybe that explains why I don't feel uh, I don't feel uh, strange with this situation. You know, it's simple. You know, I don't have an. I'm not better than any than any of my neighbors here. The difference between me and a difference between a person who passed all these experiences of being in jail, of being eyewitness in a military invasion for for uh, the city I'm living in, curfews, uh, uh, intifada, all of that. I witnessed that and I survived. So I have a kind of experience how to deal with a critical situation. And it's not a kind of mental experience. It's part of my soul. It's part of the animal who's living inside me how to survive. And I think that's what we are missing as a human being to go back to our nature. We are a survival man. We didn't born with, uh, with Lamborghini in, in, in front of our house. Thousand years of ago, we used to live in the jungle. I think that's what we need to go back. We not need to go back, not to live in the jungle, of course, but we need to go back to the original soul, 
of a human being as a survival. I will tell you that after Corona, Europe will be different. No. We go back to the same shit of consuming and going to our jobs and being a slave of this capitalism system. And we'll go back again. But I think in the long term, there is many questions that will start to interact among people and to think about it. So I think in the long term, something positive will come out of it. Yeah, I'm writing and uh, I'm writing now. After ghost hunting, I decide that uh, I will do a uh, pure fiction. You know, when I work in cinema, I, I mix fiction with documentary. I create, uh, I create a real dispositive. Then inside it, I, I can use different kind of media. And, and that's my actually ghost hunting and even part of fiction. And uh, all these experiments in, uh, in documentary gender, uh, I decided that I want to go and uh, I want to do an a pure fiction, just an a fiction story. And I'm writing an a fiction right now. It's a story happening in, in Bethlehem area. And I, I, I'm not ready yet to talk a lot about it, but um, I pass until now four or five versions of changing the story. <coughs> uh, and every time when I start a new version, I said that this is the last one. This is the one that it will work. So now I'm in the version that it will work. I'm, I'm in the last version that it will be the, the final one. But I don't know, maybe after a few months, if you talk to me, I, I will tell you again, now I'm in the new version that it will work. But that's, that's how we write. When you write a story, you can't immediately go to the deeper layer. You have to go layer by layer to discover your motivation, to discover your interest, to discover your character, to discover your passion. It's, uh, it's a process, the writing. It's like psychoanalysis. It's going so since two years now, I'm writing one year and a half. And hopefully soon I will have uh, at least the structure of the story is completed. Then after that, it's a matter of writing the dialogues, which is the script. Thanks a lot, dear. And hopefully we'll see you soon uh, in a better yeah. situation. Yeah.